Everything seems to be working. Today is gonna be a bit interesting because uh, I'm not gonna train in rings or I don't know if I'm gonna train in rings today because my buddy called me up and uh, I'm gonna train with him today and he's training in the old gym <coughs> that I trained before and it's a way more commercial gym. A lot of people there most of the times. Today it is Saturday though a bit in the afternoon so might be a little bit less people. I don't know. And I'm not expecting them to have rings. I don't remember if they had it last time or either way it's not gonna be great setup. So I brought my own set of P bars just to guarantee a good grip and uh, I'm gonna do a old school training with um, resistance band training but have P bars instead. I'm planning on doing a bit more handstand training as well. Try some one arm flag because that's something it, I get asked a lot in Instagram DMs and things about one arm handstand training and stuff like that. And to be honest, my schedule has always been planche and front lever, like all the way from the start for the last six years, I think. And then, of course, I have changed those workouts a little. So, for example, when I start to learn the handstand, I would always start my push trainings with some one arm attempts. That was, of course, a bit further in in the journey. But in the beginning, I would do handstand one arm against the wall. Then I would do just one arm, but having like two fingers as assistance. And I would always start the workouts with that skill. And with front lever training, I would do, uh, like I said, Victorian, for example. It's not necessarily front lever, but that is something that I add in the pull workouts just to get that skill. And the same was for you know, one arm training, one arm flag as well. Also a lot of push, so I added that in the beginning and maybe in the middle of the training as well. Sort of depending on how I felt. And of course, at that point, I'm not expecting me to get results that quick. Because if I'm only doing it, you know, a few attempts every session, it's gonna be pretty slow. So, but at the same time, I didn't care if I got it quick or slow. I, I just want to have it at some point. And I think the handstand training, people are work, working slow. Holy crap. But for the handstand training, I uh, think I did it for roughly one year until I started to get pretty consistent one arm attempts and you know I could hold it for maybe three seconds. And still until this day, sometimes I don't feel connection in one arm handstand. I could go up and you know just not feel it. And um, I don't know what that depends on. Maybe I'm a bit tired some sessions. But it's still a bit inconsistent. Like I said, the plan for today is gonna be Still a push workout, planche training, planche push-ups, Maltese training I'm gonna add today as well since I'm doing it on P-bars and I think it's gonna be pretty fun. My biggest concern is if I can film in this gym, I really hope so because I've never really filmed longer videos or especially not for YouTube there. So we'll see, I, I, we're gonna figure it out otherwise I'll put up a like hidden camera or something. Yesterday I also posted on my Instagram about me using like rings a lot in my workouts and just explain explain a little why I do it due to connection you know and I've told you guys a little bit about it but mainly to switch up the workout a little and because I was stuck in progress for a while so I wanted to switch up the training use the rings as a new training method puts more pressure on the nerve system as well since I'm not used to it and that has helped me a lot so that's basically what I said on Instagram and I did get a lot of people asking if they should switch up their training for rings and I'm not I'm never gonna ask or I'm never gonna answer with a just yes or no question because that's not how I like to do it so when people ask me things I usually want more information before I even can give some advice so I just said all right are you stuck in progress or are you still getting progress and they said oh, I'm, I'm progressing and at that point I'm like okay so why should this person change the workout if they're getting results. So I answered, no, don't switch it up. But if you feel like training is getting boring, or if you're starting to not progress as much, then you can try to switch it up. And I think that's a common dilemma. People, we see, especially with social media now, we see a lot of different training techniques, and just in general, a lot of different exercises. But that doesn't mean that if some professional person is doing a certain skill or a certain workout, that that is the perfect workout. <coughs> workout. I'm losing my voice. No, but that doesn't mean that that is the perfect workout or perfect exercise. It's different for everyone. So what I always tell people is, if you're getting results, don't change. Don't change anything. Just because someone said this is the best exercise ever, but you're still getting results with the things you're doing, 
or enough results to keep you satisfied, stick with it. The same is with food and everything. If if you're not having a problem, don't change the things you're doing if it's a winning concept. And that's for me, like I was getting results for a long time just using my resistance band, like training on P-bars. I was getting results but to a certain degree where I wasn't anymore. And that's the point where I start to figure, oh, maybe I should change something. But when I'm getting results, I want to be focused on that and not like, oh, maybe there's an alternative that gives me slightly more progress. That's gonna just wasting energy and your thoughts on things that aren't really gonna matter that much. So the thing is, if you're having problems, look for a solution. But if things are working out good, just enjoy the journey at that point. And don't stress about being having perfect exercise and things like that. And another thing as well was, I get some questions is, is weighted dips gonna benefit me in plenge? And uh, sort of similar questions, they're giving specific exercises. And the answer is yes, if you're also training muscle connection. Like, you're gonna see people, just because someone can bench a lot, doesn't, doesn't mean they can do, you know, planche push-ups and things. It doesn't, that correlation isn't there because of muscle connection. But if they start to train and actually know how sort of to use the muscles, that is gonna be extremely beneficial. So for me, I combine training skills, using resistance band, being in a full planche, planche position, and then, of course, I still do exercises just to strengthen the shoulder. That is nothing really to do with planche. Planche, it is just strengthening that muscle, but in combination with me actually having the muscle connection for a certain skill. Those combination is gonna be crucial, and that is gonna give me a lot of results. So that, it's the same, if I get asked, is this exercise gonna be beneficial? The common answer is gonna be yes, but I always say, but you have to combine it with some sort of muscle connection exercise as well. That's for example why leans are really good, but I would say you should do more. If you search on the internet, I don't know what the case is now, but if you search best exercise for planche, I think leans is pretty damn high up. I still think so, it was back in the days, so I think it still is. It, it is a great exercise, but I would say combine leans, it's great for co connection and everything, but you also want to be in a full planche position. So combining leans gives a lot of strength, especially if you have the right technique and form. And then combine it with full planche holds, for example with resistance bands or um, in that degree, or straddle planche holds as well. No, they're both connection. And then also combining it with just say straight arm raises, the one I'm doing, just to get that extra muscle strengthening. Then you have like the full package of building strength and getting connection. And that's what you need for the full planche and any skill in general to combine. And also this way of training, I have at least found is extremely fun to train. I would hate to just do one exercise, even if someone would tell me this is the fastest way to get planche. It might be for that person, but I would never just do one thing and do that for so long time because it would be extremely boring. And at that point, I would probably quit. I think that's a little bit of a problem with calisthenics and why it's still a small sport. I've had a lot of friends, they try the sport for a while and then they drop off. And the reason is almost always because they don't get that quick result. And that is true. Like this sport is a slow in progress. If you want to have a front lever and you start from scratch, it's going to take a few damn months. Whereas if you go to the gym and you start hitting some, you know, bicep curls and some, um, bench press, you're gonna start to see your body transform. Let's say in one or two months, you will start to see results. In the calisthenics, you're still gonna see results, but it's gonna be so small that your brain is almost not getting enough dopamine to be satisfied. I think that's the reason why a lot of people quit, because it's slow. And at that point, you understand that you have to combine it with, you need to enjoy it, you need to have some sort of degree to feel satisfied. So if you combine skill training and some weight training, you will both get skills and you're gonna build some mass as well, which is great for self-confidence and to feel satisfied about you actually working out. Because if you can't see results, it's hard in the beginning. At the point where I'm now, I can work out for a few months and not see results and still know that, all right, the results is gonna come, but it's just not here. But for someone starting from scratch and never, never gotten that gratification after a period of time, they're not gonna stick along for a few months without seeing anything. They're gonna quit and be like, no, this training thing is not for me. But it is for everyone. It's just the beginning is fucking hard. So big, that's why I also, I res have huge respect for a lot of calisthenics athletes because I know that the journey they have been on has been a true ass grind. So if I would be like a manager of a company, 
Oh, I would hire calisthenics athletes because I know they are fucking disciplined and they are putting in the work. Because if you're slacking, if you're getting things wrong, if you're giving up, you're not gonna get the result. And as soon as you start to give in a little, like, oh, fuck it, this is not for me. I'm gonna start to do this instead. Results are definitely not gonna come. All right, we are now here and uh, it's gonna be exciting today. I haven't done a full push workout on the, just the parallels in a while. It's gonna be interesting to see how much better I am or if the exposure is extremely bad right now. But I will fix it for the gym. I'll see you guys in there. Ciao, ciao. Start off the day, I will do a few sets, one arm handstand, also attempts on one arm flag and then moving on to the normal planche push-ups for the first exercise and then no, just, just do the whole schedule, to be honest, for the planche workout. Not the best ones, but first set is never the best. And uh, do two more, hopefully better. And chalk up a lot for the next set. Especially in one-arm handstand training, if you don't have the good grip, it's fucked. So I prefer either abusing the chalk or actually taping the P-bars. I think that's the better choice if you want to do a lot of, lot of trainings with it. Also, it's not as important in planche training, but it's definitely nice to always have a good grip. Probably gonna see a lot in this gym. Since there's a lot more people, they always walk right by you. And I don't know, for some reason in handstand, if you're doing a handstand, me personally, I would never walk like one meter close to you. But a lot of people do. It's like someone doing bench press. I would never, you know, walk over them and just keep going. Weird concept, but let's get the second set. Way better. I don't know if it's the chalk or just me warming up. First set, you know, that's fucked up. Second set, a bit better. Third set, probably gonna be the best one. <sighs> In handstand attempts, I think this is the only moment I don't listen to like, you know, hard style screaming people in your ear. This is more harmonic sound when it comes to balancing. No, it helps to stimulate the brain. Let's go for a full for this temp. Way better this time. I haven't trained the one arm flag too much, but it's beginning a lot of results. Just all planche training, strengthening, getting that muscle connection, peak performance. I show a lot of planche training with resistance bands, and I talk a lot about planche, but I have never shown in a single vlog me actually doing a full planche or a full planche push up. So I just want to prove that still, if I'm training with resistance band, I'm getting a lot of performance without it. Exaggerated a little on the planche push-ups, but to be honest, like my planche has improved a lot. I think it's a combination with resistance band training and training in rings. Those two, boom, all tra strength transferred to the P-bars, which is what I want. Now let's move on to the resistance band training and uh, get some actual set. First up today is planche push-up. Since I haven't done this in a while, I'm just choosing a resistance band that is it's less than when I do it on rings. I also don't know if this height is roughly the same, I think. But since I'm stronger here, using a lighter band, so we still get pretty damn high intensity. But I'm still aiming for 10 reps, don't get me wrong, and uh, also 3 sets. So everything's the same except for we're not using rings.
I think that was 11. <sighs> These ones are a bit more explosive. If I do them too slow, of course it gets a bit heavier. But I mentioned this before, when I'm doing push-ups, I want to train the push strength. And I'm also combining it with hold strength, so I get strong in this position as well. But this is mainly for the push strength. So that's my, I do explosive, but still controlled. On to set number two. Same procedure as the first one. Oh, there was one time I did this one and you like the whole body is contracting and it's almost hard to breathe or I forget to breathe so I did it once and I started to bleed from my nose because it you get a lot of pressure in the head if you don't breathe that's just that's bad try to be breathe as best as I can but sometimes hard one more set of this one and then we are moving on I think it's races and uh, also gonna try to do some weighted dips today to see if they have the equipment for it final set First five, perfect form. Next one, start to do a wiggling, not good. But now we're done with this one, moving on. I think I said wrong last time, it's actually time for some just hold, three sets of them, and then time for some press. Three sets of full planche holds. I'm gonna use the same band. If this one is a bit too easy, I might actually just do it on one bar and do this straight arm grip and hold that, because that is a bit more challenging. I don't know if that was 10 seconds. I'm gonna do the timer like I did last set. Forgot to do it on the first one. I'm gonna keep with this one because this was damn heavy. I think 10 seconds is gonna be me pushing my barriers, so stick with it. Set number two. I'm gonna try to activate the core a bit more. That takes away some pressure from the shoulders and I don't need to lean as much. Also fix my timer. So actually now I'm holding 10 seconds. Let's do it. Fuck, that's heavy. I don't know how much this band is actually helping. I'm gonna take a weight after the three sets and just see how much kilograms this is. I'm betting it's not a lot. One more set to go. Took some extra rest just to make sure I can get my 10 seconds for the final set. I do like holds, but the band isn't helping too much. Still aiming for 10. Hopefully I can get that. Let's get it. So I'm looking too good with the form. Start to go almost into dead fetch in the end, but 10 seconds is still gonna be 10 seconds. Let's move on. Just to get a measurement of roughly how much weight this is, helping me with, take a 10 kg, just balancing it. This one is going almost to the ground, so it's definitely not 10 kg. I did try with a 5 kg, it came about here. So I would guess probably getting about 6 kg help, and that is not a lot. In my push-ups, they look super strong. That's also when I get a band down here, it do help me 10 kg. So this first explosive part is 10 kg help, which is beneficial or making it easier. But the holds, 6 kg constant, that's rough. Next up in the schedule should have been my planche press. But even though it could be possible to do it here, I am gonna skip that part because the setup isn't perfect and uh, no, it doesn't matter too much if I skip it today. So I'm gonna move on to the straight arm races and then do some weighted dips as well. And that's gonna be it for today's workout. Next up is the straight arm races and uh, all the benches were occupied, so I'm gonna do it on the floor, which can be pretty good. I'm gonna show you that this works as well. Just gotta be careful with the lowest position. I don't wanna really touch the ground. You know, you can touch a little, but not come down all completely and go up. Just wanna have my muscles activated for the whole exercise. Three sets, 10 reps.
pretty decent. This was 16 kg, they don't have the 17.5, which I usually, usually go with. So I'm expecting these reps to be a bit easier than normal, which they were. But that's absolutely fine. Two more sets. First set looked pretty good. Gonna do the same for the second one. And um, you know, always locked arms and try to hold the retraction form. If I can do that throughout the whole set, I'm getting a lot of connection. One exercise I've also done before, now I like to do races, but I did just static holds for, for it as well. And if you have it pretty wide, this simulates the Maltese a lot. So it's gonna be beneficial and give you a lot of strength in that scale. Now I do this because I wanna have the sort of press strength, that's why I do races. But just holding static, controlled, protracted form, straight arms, also gives a lot of connection. Final set. Noise. Next up, we do have the dips. I don't have my normal dip belt with me, but the gym has this one and it's sort of homemade. I am not sure the setup is gonna be able to hold the weights, but we're gonna try. First up, it's 70 kg, 10 reps. This setup, also smaller bars. In my opinion, that's harder. It's a bit more harsh on the hands. But we're gonna try 70 kg, 10 reps. And uh, if this one holds, Maybe we can do three sets after all. We are on. Got myself to 7 kg. Put the camera a bit further back so we know it's actually framed right. And we can zoom in for the later rep. This is going to be interesting. <sighs> Belt seem to be holding. Pretty light work. The belt was actually better than I thought. Squeezing, squeezing your balls a little, but except for that, it's working pretty good. You can be able to do three sets, 10 reps each, 70 kg, keeping up with a progressive overload. One more set, or two more. Oh. What I'll say, like dips is one of these muscles or exercises. When you do it a lot, add it like at least one or two times per week, progress comes fast. So I've been stepping up my game a lot in dips just by doing it consistently. Still risky business on this equipment. Trusting the muscles, but not, not the gear I'm using. Final set, and the final one for today's workout as well. Since I felt extremely strong in dips today, I'm just gonna max it out. Probably gonna get about 13 reps, and uh, it's gonna be pretty solid. Good way to wrap it up. I think that was 13, unless I lost count. Pretty damn solid. I'm just gonna wrap it up with an outro here. Since it's a more public gym, no, not gonna be any flexing. One thing that's interesting, I think in a few vlogs ago, I told you I was at 86 kg. I was completely wrong. In one of the breaks, I went to the toilet and in the changing room, they have a you know, scale. And I'm at 88 kg, which is insane. Like, by far the highest weight I've ever reached. 
And uh, the weird part is that I feel so damn strong. I literally thought I had dropped weight. I thought I was at, you know, 86 maximum because everything felt so damn light. So this is just another proof that when you take away the fact that you're weighing a certain weight, more just look at the results and that's where your starting point is. So that's what I've been doing now and I'm just gonna keep doing what I'm doing. And uh, obviously this extra weight is gonna be mainly muscle since I'm getting more progress, since I'm feeling stronger and uh, you know, since I'm getting it, I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing and it's a winning concept. But now, Let's wrap it up and I will see you guys in the next one. Ciao, ciao.